typically do this on Thursday nights for anybody joining us for the first time ever. You'll know that. Uh, but uh, daughter's birthday tomorrow night. So we went yeah. this directly after AEW Dynamite. We got a Jeff in the chat. So things feel right. Right. Jeffrey Sills is in the chat on the YouTube. What am I talking about? Chat on YouTube. If you're a podcast listener, listen up better. Uh, you could catch us live and be in on the conversation. You could join the YouTube chats. On Thursdays, typically, sometimes Wednesdays, but you can always know if you subscribe to AllEliteWrapUp.com, you'll get a friendly email each week telling you when we're about to go live. Uh, but you can always catch that, too. You can watch the live stream later, or you can listen to the podcast, and we love you podcast listeners. But we also love Jeffrey Sills in the chat, who says, what up, boys? Shout out to the best tag team since the best friends. Hashtag, I'm hurt, dog. Tom, I, I saw it coming when, you know, we'll get there, right? Like, when right as... As the hug was coming, and I was like, oh, man. Like, I already knew. It. I was like, chef's kiss, and they pulled it off great. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about mm -hmm. so much about All Elite's uh, AEW Dynamite because it was amazing. I can't wait to get into to the Best Friends chat and so much other things. We're going to go out to the threads. I want to remind you that we are on threads at all underscore elite underscore wrap up. Nailed it. Uh, we're, if you're yep. using hashtag AEW Dynamite, we are going to steal your shit, and we're going to put it right here, and we're all going to talk about what you're talking about because we love the community, we love the AEW fans, and we like to breed positivity and love of AEW. So we're going to talk about stuff that you're talking about that we think is fun. So, Tom, what's fun in Tom's world? Well, you know, I just want to follow up on one thing that you said there. We like to uh, share what other people are saying about AEW Dynamite. Mm -hmm. Uh, for two reasons. One, we just want to get to know more people and we feel like if we're sharing their content, maybe they'll interact with us. And two, we like what they're saying. So we want others to hear it, right? We may have an audience that they may not have. And so we want to have this synergy, you could yeah. say. And so that's why we're sharing it. Again, yeah. no one's reached we're definitely out not to say. To say, don't ahead. do it. Right. Right. Yeah. I was going to say. Uh, no one has reached out yet and been like, oh, don't do it. So, you know, obviously, if you do have any objections, let us know. We'll be glad to to talk to you. Uh, but, yeah, sure. we're really just about hanging out, talking some AEW. Uh, big week. I mean, I tell you, we got so many things coming up. We've obviously got uh, on Friday night, we've got Ring of Honor champion Eddie Kingston versus uh, Mark Briscoe. Uh, then you got... Uh, the the rest of the card, which is pretty stacked as well. And then you got a late night collision because of the NCAA final four. Uh, so a lot of fun stuff to look forward to, but let's get right into it, Tim. I feel like we just got to, we got to talk about it because we're here. So yeah, Tim, it was a big week outside of the ring and it was alluded to right off the jump. We get Adam Copeland coming down to the ring. And he just comes out and says, hey, a lot of BS has been spewed this week. And screw that. He wants to talk about positivities, positive things uh, in pro wrestling. And he, he goes on a little bit of a monologue here where he watched this and this and this and this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so he loves pro wrestling. So it's okay if you watch X, Y, and Z. Okay, before I guess I share my thoughts, Tim, let's uh, let's fill the people in on what he may be alluding to, and then let me get your thoughts and if you got any threads to go along with it. We do have a thread, so let me shout out the threads here. Uh, at uh, I believe this is Miss Malaki says Adam Copeland telling CM Punk to go fuck himself in the sweetest way possible. Hashtag AEW Dynamite. Definitely uh, peppered with that. <laughs> Uh, to say the least, if not the whole purpose of the promo. It did feel like AEW's response to, like, what the CM Punk interview on the MMA Hour with Ariel Hawani was. And, man, you know, I have never been an MMA fan, but I have heard from you over the, f what, 15 close to years now we've been friends? Mm. You were uh, my producer on an MMA show. And, and there we go. And so... Uh, it, I've known who this person is, right? And I've always thought, like, this guy's kind of, eh, you know, 
a little bit of a, uh, I don't like this guy. Um, but I'm not really plugged into that world, so it never really bothered me. But now we've had a couple iterations of this guy very skewed in the in this idea of this tribalism that exists amongst AEW and WWE, which we are of the lot of, we are the all elite wrap-up, and we are AEW marks, and we love AEW, and we do have reasons why we don't like WWE, but we're here to say, I don't give a shit, right? Like, <laughs> don't give a shit, right? Like, we're just trying to yeah. watch the show and watch what we like and talk to people that like it also. So, you know, the CM Punk interview came out, and it's scathing, and I don't think I have to fill in a whole lot of people about that, right? But it does mm-hmm. feel like, Again, CM Punk doesn't take accountability and everything's everybody else's fault, right? Like, there, there could be, I'm not to discount that some of the things that uh, annoyed CM Punk over there were probably valid things that annoyed him. It might have annoyed me too, right? The guy doesn't seem to think that when he's like, so I just choked a guy, that's not okay, right? <laughs> like, that's, that's a little weird, right? So, that's what it felt like again. It's like, here goes CM Punk again. Talking about how, like, I did everything right. I was a perfect angel and couldn't have done anything wrong. And these, uh, like, outrageous things just started happening around me that I had to go into self-defense mode. And, and uh, you know what? I, I personally think I'm siding with Tony Schiavone on this one. And I don't give a shit. Right? Like, I don't give a shit what that guy has to say. He clearly, mm-hmm. clearly, clearly has a problem taking like responsibility for shit in his life. So I don't really care like what he has to say. Yeah, I would say this. There's a lot, there's a lot to unpack here. So before we get to Adam Copeland's comments, I do want to talk about what he was referring to. Uh, I will say in CM Punk's defense, he went on an interview show and he answered the questions that were asked asked to him, right? He didn't say, sure. "Hey, by the way, yeah, 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 I'm I got this match that I'm going to be commentating Seth Rollins with Drew McIntyre, but let me tell you, fuck the Young Bucks." Like he didn't do that. You know what I mean? Now they were maybe teed up for him, and he knocked it out of the park, as you could say. Also, I wouldn't discredit Ariel Hawani because this was the first time at least to my knowledge that we've had a sit down out of the ring, out of a WWE produced interview. You know what I mean? This wasn't a backstage thing where Kathy Kelly's asking CM Punk questions. This was a close to an hour sit down. And for Ariel to not ask about, Hey, where'd you come from? Would be yeah. uh, disingenuous. Now here's the thing yeah, that I'll say. Ariel, though. Is well, disingenuous. this is what I want to say. He didn't do that with Triple H. Well, I, he didn't. And so here's the thing is because <laughs> Ariel Awani has been doing MMA coverage since AOL Fan House uh, 2007. Yeah, right. He has been right. in this space forever. And he comes from the University of Syracuse, which is one of the greatest journalism schools in America. Mm-hmm. Um, he is well respected by He's like legit people. Well, yeah, he's respected by legit people like Bob Costas as just an example and others as well. And so when he does MMA, he's as good as it gets for an interview. Now his, you know, breaking of stories, editorials, there's other people, right? Ben Folks, Chad Dundas, anyhow. But when he dips his toe over into the pro wrestling world, he's compromised because The person who runs WWE now, Nick Khan, used to be Ariel's agent. So they have a very good relationship. Legitimately, the only reason he's not his agent is because Nick Khan took the WWE job. Like it was up until the day that Nick Khan said, going to take a job with WWE, Ariel was represented by him. So in no way can he, I shouldn't say no way, but he is definitely skewed to help out his buddy, right? He's on the end, right? He's friendly. But to me, this is where it's just like, then stay out, right? So later on in that podcast, or whatever you want to call it, episode, he does an interview with Rhea Ripley. Becky Lynch comes in, tries to start like a little fight. Fine, right? MTV's done that. VH1's done that. So many shows have played along with the pro wrestling kind of gimmick. I can remember on TRL Raven hitting DDP with a stop sign over his head. Right. So we've had the tonight show has probably had countless times where somebody's coming. The tonight show was taken. Mm -hmm. The tonight show was taken over by Hollywood Hogan and Eric Bischoff one night. Remember when Jay Leno was about to wrestle? That's true. 
And so those things are fine. But when you then say, okay, but we're taking that hat off and now we're going to be journalistic. That's where the issue comes is because then you're not objective. You're subjective because you have your friend who works for this company. I will also say to his credit, he has also had AEW people on the way he kind of got into this controversy with Tony Khan is he booked MJF and AEW has a certain way of doing it. Apparently Ariel did not follow that and neither did MJF. So it pissed off Tony Khan, da, 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 bad interview with Tony Khan. Now we don't like each other. Right. So my issue with Ariel is just stay out, right? Not to stay in your lane, like uh, shut up and dribble. I'm not saying that, but like, if you can't be, the journalist that you are in the MMA space, don't do it in pro wrestling. Just, just say you're a fan, say you like that the rock did a segment and keep it moving. Right now I have a little issue, just a touch of an issue with what Adam Copeland said tonight, because Mm -hmm. as I've said, kind of my 2024 pro wrestling mantra is pro wrestling is big enough to like and dislike whatever it is that you want and don't want and that's okay as long as you're not just like well fuck that you know like don't be a jerk but if you don't right. like said, lucha libre watch what you want to watch right we'll watch what we want to watch exactly and, and that's fine right the thing that i take a little bit of issue with and i haven't been able to verbalize it I said it on threads that it's okay if you only like one promotion and it's okay if you like 40 promotions. Okay. Right. The thing is with this tribalism taboo word that is frustrating is I'm not tribalistic just because I like one show. Right. Right. Like if you tell me, Hey, it's WrestleMania week. Are you going to watch WrestleMania night one and two? If I respond by saying, no, man, I'm going to watch ring of honor on Friday night. And then I'll probably watch the women's and men's uh, NCAA basketball tournament. Your response to me should never be, well, what the fuck? You don't like it. Be angry. Yeah, man. Yeah. Right. Don't be angry yeah. at me because of what I like and dislike. That's yeah. the thing when, and then you use the word tribalism to me in this example, and it's not fair, you know? Not to get political mm-hmm. here, but it's almost like the word woke, right? We just use the word woke to be anything I don't fucking like, right? Oh, you don't like uh, Channel 42? You must be woke. It's like, no, I just don't like those yeah. fucking people. Well, you know what it, I mean? Now, it means again, that's empathy, getting... but you know what I mean? But in, yeah, in broad you know sense. how it's being, <laughs> but yeah. But it's being yeah. weaponized, right? And I Correct, feel like, correct. And so like, is this. So is yeah, the tribalism. I feel like this yeah. is being mm-hmm. weaponized against people who say, I just like this thing, right? I like your shirt. You let's just say as an example, you love Nick Gage, right? That's your style Gage. of wrestling that you love. Right. But let's just go along mother- with that. Mm. Mm-hmm. But let's just go along with that example a little bit. Hold on. That's you were ready to run off with this man into the night and rob him. a bank with him when we met the I fucking <laughs> always love him. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love Nick Gage. I think love you felt him. him up a little bit on that hug. I no, I wanted like to be like blood brothers. If he would have been like slit your wrist, I'd be like, yep, let's do it. You know, like Absolutely. let's join blood I know. together. I yeah. know. Love him. I still love that we skipped the line and gave them like a 20 when it was supposed to be like a hundred times. <laughs> Yeah, it's fine. Just like, hurry it up. Get the fuck out yeah. Of here. Get out of yeah. here. Yeah. But to continue with that point, if the only style of wrestling wrestling you like is death match, just as an example, if mm-hmm. I come to you and I'm like, dude, Inta versus Ricky Starks was insane. If you were to say like, I don't like that again, my reaction can't be like, oh, so you just don't like fucking wrestling. Oh, oh my God. So ugh, dude, do you, oh, so do you're you know, E Mark or whatever the fuck these yeah. terms are? Yeah. I can't stand it. That's the part. Yeah. And so that's the part when, when wrestling fans are like, but I like this and this and this, and that doesn't make you a better wrestling fan than me. And it also doesn't make you better or worse. You know what I mean? So like, if you watch TNA, AEW, WWE, fucking cool. But if I say, I don't like TNA and you're like, you don't know that the motor city machine guns left. No, like I'm mean, obviously I do, but you know what I'm saying? Like, no, I didn't see their last match. Oh, you must not be a wrestling fan. The fuck I am. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so I take a little bit of issue with 
tribalism being weaponized as a well if you don't watch everything and you don't know everything then you're not a wrestling fan yeah it's almost as if they're accusing you of, of when you say because i'm not i'm absolutely not going to watch any bit of wrestlemania I'm not making a statement by saying that, but that's what they mm-hmm. accuse you of, right? Yes, I'm exactly. not saying I'm not watching them because I think they're run by a, a sexual predator and, and a person there. I mean, that's part of the reason I don't like them. But mm-hmm. my primary reason is I don't like that show, and I think it's boring, and I think it's fucking sub, you know, subsurface level storylines, and it's bullshit, and I don't like it. Right. It's over-commercialized mm-hmm. nonsense. It mm-hmm. doesn't feel real in the slightest, right? I understand none of it's real. But uh, so that's it right there. This tribalism goes all over the place with, with that, right? Um, and there's various reasons to watch or to not watch something, right? I'll hear all kinds of reasons on why you don't watch something, right? Like, I don't watch because I don't like this company's stance on this, or I don't watch because I, I don't like what it is, right? I just don't like it. But for you, the reason to watch something being anything other than like, I have a good time watching it is a little weird to me, right? If there's any mm-hmm. other reason outside of that, right? Yeah. If you're telling me like, oh man, they make so much more money or they sell much, much more merch. I'm like, okay, that can be true. But like that, that shouldn't be a reason why I'm picking to watch it versus another programming is really weird to me. It's yeah, really dumb. Le- but like yeah. with the whole tribalism thing, one thing I really need to let people know, especially with the, the fucking CM Punk thing who won't go away. What I need people to understand, and this goes broader, right? This goes to the woke side of things as well, right? Guys, you don't fucking know, right? I see people saying like, well, clearly this is a Jack Perry problem. He grew up a spoiled rich kid and wants everything given to him. You don't fucking know him. You also weren't here in this situation. You didn't see it. You don't know. You also don't run a company. You can't be like... Tony Khan just doesn't have his shit together. You don't fucking know. What the fuck is wrong with all these armchair executives and armchair people all of a sudden being like, well, I tell you what, if they would have just, you don't fucking know. Mm-hmm. God damn, yeah. spare me all your faux fucking wisdom, people. You don't fucking know shit. Yeah. Like, you don't know shit. There are plenty of logical statements you can make from not knowing shit, but how everything everybody else is saying about like what should have happened, who should have said what, who ruined what, who drew what, who's smarter than who, who got the fucking short of the stick. None of you know jack shit. So all these mm-hmm. declarative statements are just I'm I'm done with them all. Like it, it's really listen to everybody's favorite uncle, the calming voice in pro wrestling, Tony Schiavone. You don't need to give a shit about any of this. Right. Yeah, the last thing that I would say about tribalism is it's not unique to pro wrestling. There are plenty of people who only wear Nikes. There are plenty of people who yeah. only eat <laughs> right. McDonald's yeah. over Burger King. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, don't, right? If, if you only drink Coca-Cola and I come up to you like, dude, you don't want a fucking Pepsi? Oh, you don't want Sprite? Like, I don't know if there's, you know what I mean? Like, oh, you don't, so you yeah. must not like soft drinks. You must not like soft drinks. It's like. It's not the flavor I like, or, you know, with, with the shoes, the shoe doesn't really fit me that well. I have a different foot. So I prefer new balances or whatever it is. Right. We don't shame people and be like, oh, you should get Jordans. You fucking pussy. Like, no, <laughs> right. No. So that's what I'll say there. And I'll yeah, leave it at it that. Does but feel let's weird. Keep I will say this tinfoil hat. Timmy says curious timing for WWE for a bombshell interview that was supposed to be not to happen because of an NDA when other crazy news hit hit the fan about yeah some and of their but whatever. yeah we will mm-hmm. wait till more mm-hmm. things are out about that to mm-hmm. maybe discuss it um, or maybe not we'll find out <laughs> or maybe um, not because we're the all eat wrap up and we're gonna talk about dynamite now that was adam copeland right he had that open um it was a nice pump up speech. He, you know, he really felt it, and so not to shit on him there, right? He went out and did what he was supposed to do. Right? Oh, of course, yeah, he did it fine. Yeah, yeah. And again, if he feels that way, that's great. That's uh, like, I'm not shaming him. I'm just saying, don't shame me because of X, Y, Z. Right. So let's keep it moving. What he then does is says, Hey, a W is great. I like it here. I like it for all these reasons. I haven't faced this person, this person, this person, and this person. And you know what makes a W great people like this, who's going to take us moving forward. And he introduces Will Ospreay found that interesting handshake, handshake. And we have a, uh, a match between two Don Callis guys, which again feels like this elephant in the room where 
Adam Copeland shaking Will Ospreay's hand. Will Ospreay's high-fiving all the fans. But Don Callis and his family are heels. So, like, let's get this thing wrapped up, right? But we have Will Ospreay versus Powerhouse Hobbs. And what I would say here is, to break, you know, kayfabe for a moment, it was really great to see Powerhouse Hobbs in a good featured spot, right? Will Ospreay, like I said on threads, is being pushed to the moon. It feels like he's the next big thing in AEW. And so for Powerhouse Hobbs to stand next to him or, you know, wrestle him, adds a little credibility to him. And he gave him a good match here. Uh, ultimately, though, Will Ospreay gets the win. Uh, what did you think of our opening contest? Uh, the opening contest was fun. I'm also going to shout out the threads here first from uh, a, a Bortress. Hope I'm saying yep. that right. Osprey and Hobbs both looked incredible out there. Hashtag AEW Dynamite. And, you know, we need more powerhouse Hobbs in our life. We've said that a thousand times. But this match, again, Will Osprey is hitting everything with, not to steal an overused term, with five stars, right? Like everything he's doing is just, you're like, yep. I see it. Like, yeah, I get it. I understand. Right? Like everybody, everybody is right. Right. I can get it. So I, that was fine. Right. The match is great. Everybody's pumped up after, after, you know, our favorite, you know, our second favorite uncle's speech and mm -hmm. things are flowing. Um, I, Hobbs, man, Hobbs. Uh, look, Don Callis is great. And I know we've got the Don Callis family, but I think maybe we should focus Don Callis's efforts. I don't think Don Callis needs a family and people need to be like fighting Don Callis with his minions. I think Don Callis needs to be fluffing up, for lack of a better term here, somebody like mm -hmm. a powerhouse Hobbs, right? Yep. Like he's the one doing kind of like we got with Pinta later, where somebody's laying out the bulk of it and then powerhouse can be like, throw down some cool lines and look like a smooth motherfucker, right? Yeah. That's what we need. And, and we I need agree. to get that going with Powerhouse Hobbs. I'm sure you've got hell of, of, of ideas. If we gave Tom the pencil, we know that can happen. So, so Tony, if you need ideas, we're here for you. But, man, I, I like the match, but I just really – it left me going, like, cool and all. Man, I really wish we could do something with, with Hobbs. Yeah. It left me saying the same thing. Uh, one thing, not to get ahead of ourselves here, but one thing that – wasn't necessarily the greatest thing for tonight's episode was this was a 20 minute match. Now for this opening contest, it makes a little bit more sense, right? They're both in the same family. So you would assume they know uh, more than the other wrestlers, their strengths and weaknesses because they tr probably travel the road together, you know, all those little things about being part of a faction. So it makes sense that this match would be a little bit longer. But I felt like every match was kind of the same cookie cutter, Long. 20 minute thing. And, you know, we'll, we'll get to it as we get through the matches. But post match, uh, Don Callis gets in the ring because Hobbs is mad because he lost. He tries to get Osprey's face and then Don Callis plays keep, uh, you know, peacekeeper. But then he whispers something in Powerhouse Hobbs ear. He's like, and then they all leave. And then as they leave because they leave opposite sides. Like, you know, I don't know directions, but powerhouse Hobbs and Don Callis left North and uh, Osprey left South. But as Osprey is going up the ramp, Brian Danielson, the pettiest motherfucker in AEW's mm -hmm. whole roster just comes out before he could even make it to the back. And he just looks at him. Osprey to his credit says, top that Brian Danielson's like, yeah, duh. I could easily do that. Right. And then he runs down and we go to commercial. What did you think about Brian Danielson coming out before the commercial break? He does have a way, even when he was Daniel Bryan, of mm -hmm. that, right? Like somebody's like, God damn it, and fuck you too. And they turn around and now here's this guy with his open mouth smile, like, mm -hmm. uh, like ready to fucking twist that knife a little, right? Like he, he, he's known for that and it's very good and this was exactly what that was but it's good right again it it's those are easy ways without having to set up another promo where they say the same lines to each other mm -hmm. to kind of keep you know keep a little heat and little tension between folks yeah and so brian danielson when we get back from break he's taking on lance archer and here's a good example of where mm -hmm. could have used a six-minute match 
Not to say that Lance Archer is bad. I think the spot he does in this match where he uses a crew member to body slam onto Brian Danielson is awesome. I love that about the character of Lance Archer. So but we're also not in the Lance Archer business right now. You get what I'm saying? Like, we're not here no. to be like, this fucking guy's As great next. as he is. Right. Right. That's where in pro wrestling and in most other entertainment things, you're hot and you're cold, right? You move up, you move down, you move up, you move down, right? Well, yeah, we don't need to like do a 20 minute match to make Lance Archer look good in defeat. Lance Archer will look good in whatever he does for yeah, the most exactly. part, even if it was a six minute match, right? Yeah. And so this also, because in my opinion, Osprey is the one where everyone's going crazy. If Brian Danielson can do a little, you know, stomp the ground, y'all moth- motherfuckers must have forgot who I was kind of match. I think that would add a little bit more going into this where it says like, oh shit, well, Lance Archer's maybe bigger than Powerhouse Hobbs, but he beat him in like 12 minutes less. You know what I'm saying? That's just it. Nobody's going to look at Lance Archer less next week yeah. and be like, Pfft. What a chump lost to lost to Brian Danielson. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. Like we're, nobody's gonna do that, right? Everybody mm-hmm. dies is all you're gonna be thinking about when you see that guy, and you're like, "Listen, here, here's what I got in my wallet. Here, sir, please take it. Exactly, please yeah. take it. Yeah, yeah, and exactly. Losing to Brian Danielson is is not getting buried. I've always had right. the notion, especially with how stacked the AEW roster is, anyone getting TV time isn't getting buried. You can't tell me like, oh, they lost three times in a row. Guess yeah. what? Miro hasn't been seen since the last fucking pay-per-view. You know, I don't know if he's hurt or not, but you understand what I'm saying? Like, so don't tell me. Yeah. Well, he lost three weeks in a row. That's TV time. Yeah. The easy way to tell that story too is, is Lance Archer came in trying to throw everything around and Danielson out tricked him and tripped him up and twisted him up and made him be like, oh shit, I got a tap or my leg's going to break. And then you're like, all right. Yeah. I'm dummy. the best in the world. See ya. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, they can have Archer going on a tirade in the back, and somebody else gets in his way, and then then he's off. There Easy storytelling. Go. Easy story. But uh, after this, we then do a on stage promo, which I think was a miss, but mm-hmm. it's with everyone's, uh, you know, as you're using the uncle analogies. This is the uncle who won't be quiet. We're all ready to eat, but he continues to tell you stories about the war, and it's Chris Jericho, and he walks out. And he calls out Hook, and I don't know. They say the same thing again. And Hook goes, hey, guess what? I got a match for us. And Jericho says, bet. And you could tell he didn't even like saying it, so I don't know why he did it, but whatever. As soon as they do whatever it is that they do that was awkward. Hold on. I missed that part, I guess. Oh, he said, yeah. He goes, bet. Bet. <laughs> Bet. Yeah, it was not good. Wait, just no. Nope. Hook had to teach him that one, right? Like that. <laughs> yeah, no, nope. don't do it, bud. Don't do it. Look, look, I'm of the age borderline thing where like it it like I know it but shouldn't use it, right? But like he doesn't even know it. Come on. Man. Yeah. Just don't <laughs> right. just don't say it. But as soon don't as do. they say that they have a match, we go backstage. And Lee Moriarty and Shane Taylor are saying, hey, assholes, we're going to be the ones that face you on collision. And okay. Shane, let me get your, what Shane Taylor? What do you think of this Shane Taylor? Or do you think about Shane Taylor? (laughs) I don't think about (laughs) Shane Taylor. Now, let me go to threads real quick. First of all, uh, on the last topic we were just on, I forgot to throw this one in here. Uh, at uh, uh, oops, wrong one. At uh, uh, radio on the Tony says Jericho wants to be Hook's mentor, but only if he signs an NDA. Hashtag AW Dynamite. Allegedly, 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 allegedly. Now, uh, Shane Taylor, Tom. Uh, uh, this is uh, Rucci. I don't, nailed it. Says Shane Taylor promotions for life. Let's get these guys some wins. They deserve it. Hashtag AW Dynamite. If they deserve it, I, I don't know where it's getting squeezed in on dynamite, right? I don't I don't know anything about Shane Taylor Productions. Have they been doing things on like Collision or Rampage even? Like I don't know anything. Like I know well, who they are, a, obviously, and like yeah. we've seen them, but like they've been doing primarily things on Ring of Honor. 
uh, Shane Taylor was right. predates. Okay, that's even, what I feel like. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. Shane Taylor predates even Tony Khan purchasing Ring right. of Honor. He was around back then, of course. right? Um, yeah, yeah. I guess my thoughts on him, but here is, lately, AW, have we been seeing them? No, right? I didn't. No, I mean, yeah, he's been popping up, but nothing crazy. Like he had a uh, right. uh, when Samoa Joe was the Ring of Honor TV champion, he had a pay per view right. match with yeah, but that was Samoa a while Joe. back now, several months yeah. back now. Yeah, so yeah, I, I mean, forgot he was around. Honestly, when I saw him, I was like, "Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah." Well, my thing with him is, I just—it's not that I don't believe him. Get what I'm saying? Like, I believe he's like this is the character that I am, and then if you got to know him, it would be an extension of who he really is. But when he, it doesn't come across genuine. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Like, I do. Like, I'm a Chiefs fan, right? As you can see from my background. But if I were to give this monologue about the Chiefs, and it and it sounds like Shane Taylor, you might not think I'm a Chiefs fan. Does that make sense of what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, I just I don't I don't get something's missing. Well, That's what I'll say. Something's missing I, with Shane. I Taylor. do know you had a say in the matter in making sure the Chiefs leave Kansas City. So. <laughs> No, I had a say so, in the matter that the so. billionaires aren't going to ask for a tax from the poor people. No, and that's a good say. Who can even afford to go to the I goddamn games? Yeah, Fuck I that shit. I don't care who yeah. you are. You didn't have a say in it. They're still making that decision on their own. I agree with you. I was well, <laughs> my vote of no was to say you're not going to ask people. One in seven Missourians are live in poverty. Here's a fun fact side yeah. quest. One one in mm-hmm. seven Missourians live in poverty, and a billionaire who has one twenty five billion dollars from his family, and then another one ten million from just being oil businessman, is asking those individuals, the one in seven, to pay a tax on things they can't even afford to go to. They can't afford to go to a football game or a baseball game, yeah. but they want your tax dollars. Fuck you. I will say that to every owner. Yeah. I digress. No, and and that's right. And and I and I, I no, I've always heard uh, the thing of they're like, why would the Jackson County folks pay this tax when it's the Johnson County folks that go to the games? And I was like, the problem with that is Johnson County would probably be like, all right, well, come on over here, <laughs> we'll, well build that up. But that's what, that's probably what'll happen. But hey, you know. Well, and this Whatever. that's the thing. And then you guys are going to be like, well, why is your property tax so high? God damn, this sucks. And like, oh yeah, hmm, well, how how's that working out for you? Huh? Yeah. Great that you got that. Taxes. You ain't even got to be in Johnson County, but that's Kansas yeah. and Missouri stuff that that yep. people don't want to hear. We'll get we back get back to from the break. AW Dynamite. Yeah, we get back from break. Jay White makes his entrance, and in the shadows of his entrance, Billy Gunn shows up, and we get a knockdown, drag out fight. If you recall from Collision, we saw a video of Jay White and the Ass Boys invading Billy Gunn's home. Billy Gunn catching them. Mm-hmm. They scurry off. He's mad. This is why we have the match. Another point, though, that I would say we don't need. I'm reading from a a, a, um, a recap here. Let me see if they give us a time on this match. Uh, they don't on this one, but we don't need match time. Not rated. Yeah. yeah, we don't yeah. need 14 minutes or so to just do the same thing. One other note I would say, though. I think Billy Gunn is fun. I think he is legit, right? When he cuts promos, it sounds like he didn't need a script. All of those things. He's jacked. He's bigger than everyone else. Side note, he is one year older than Iron Sheik when Iron Sheik won the Battle Royal at WrestleMania 17. Go watch Iron Sheik in that and then go look at Billy Gunn. Um, But I don't need Billy Gunn feuding with his sons anymore. I get it. It feels like we've been doing this for 12 years. You know what I mean? So one of you yeah, got to go. Stop feuding altogether or put them back and let's turn them into the ass boys and have him <laughs> out there managing them or something, right? Like, let's stop this. I agree. Uh, we got some threads on Jay White. Uh, says, uh, Bleary Line 7 says, Jay White is the best shit heel wrestler on earth, in my humble opinion. He's never not being a cowardly piece of shit at any point in time. Hashtag AEW Dynamite. And that's true. Uh, and that's fine. But as Tom's saying here, like, this is just overdone with the gang bang scissor gang slash ass boys versus daddy ass like enough of this uh, enough of this. it has stalled all of them in the cool factor 
hundred percent. It's all yeah. done. And another thing about this, let me let's talk about this. Uh, at must be Colin says new ROH trios belts. Yeah, they aren't merging the titles. Hashtag AEW Dynamite. So again, here we are forcing, I guess two, two trios divisions. But I don't think we got it. Look, it's hard to be giving me both a tag team division and a trios division in the in the amount of television you have, and trying to have those both be robust. Man, you, those should be one division that cross back and forth. If anything, if you're asking me, I I just don't. I get it because I think at one time it was Kenny Omega and the Bucks, and that's what we want to do. And hey, we've got Death Triangle. Hey, we got best friends, and that's all great. But it wasn't. It feels like a short-sighted title that wasn't uh, having any thought for long-term investment. That's what I would kind of wrap that up with. Um, but again, a little bit too long. The acclaim come out, and even them, like they got like a yay. But then it was uh... yeah, they're stale. I th- I said this a long time ago. You better be thinking about what's next. And this la 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 scissor, amen. After a while, right? Like I was like, everybody's gonna get tired of that after a while. Well, but the I, to me, if I had the pin, as I like to say, that could be a shirt where you could make. If I had the pin, but um, they're better heels, right? What got them over was 100%. heels. What got them over was. Look at these fucking nerds in the ring and us going like, God damn, those were some, man, they really went there. Oh, they talked about this thing that's in the news. Right. Motherfucker. And they're not doing any of those things anymore. Even, yeah. yes, I agree with you. The yeah. scissoring thing, but the scissoring thing. But yeah, but you biting over lines the head and then he's sitting there wagging his dick in front of, you know what I mean? And being like, what are you going to do about it? I just, I just said your mom's a whore, right? Like. Mm-hmm. That yeah, that's that feels more likable in a weird way to the pro wrestling fan, right? It feels more genuine. It feels more like, oh, that's yeah. something I've seen before. That's someone I know, right? Again, it's not the 1980s anymore. Hogan must pose shit needs to go. That's why, not to bring up CM Punk again, but his collision run was fucking trash because it was yeah. all Punk must pose at the end of the night, and that fucking sucks. This feels like the end of the NWO Wolf Pack, right? When it was like, Mm -hmm. everybody's got to come out and say their 15-minute catchphrase, right? Yeah. All of them. Here again. (laughs) Right? Like every week. Yes. Yes, yes. That's a great, great call out. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I totally agree with you there. Uh, All right. So then after we get that, we see a backstage shot. Young Bucks arrive, they're suited in all their dumb and dumber gear. And then we see the best friends, and Sue's with them. Sue is with them. Fucking Sue. Love, Love Sue. Sue. Then we keep it moving, and we do an interesting, I want your take on this. We do an interesting on stage promo, but this time we change the placement of the camera. So we have Renee Paquette bring out Willow Nightingale. She is accompanied by Chris Statlander and Stokely Hathaway, but they have them not facing the crowd. It was almost like, if you recall, you know, 80s Mean Gene Okerlund standing on the stage, you know, and they had the like egg or box. they had, yeah, yeah like it, right. it felt like that. Yeah, it's, it is kind of what it felt like. And maybe it's just trying something new just to kind of show, you know, what's Which here. Which is not. I, I get to me, that's great. If you want to try new things, awesome. But then it makes no fucking sense why you did Jericho and Hook facing the crowd. The other you way. know what I mean? Like, yeah. Keep it, keep True. it the same. Keep it the you know same what I mean? Tonight. Yeah. Keep it the same yeah. tonight, at least. Yeah. Yeah. So she comes out and she's putting over that uh, she's from what town was it in? What town are we in here tonight? Uh, let me look oh, this here. is, um, this was Worcester. Yeah, Massachusetts. And she's saying, hey, I was up and down these roads, and they're just eating it up. And then, I think you got some sound for us. She says... No. uh, (laughs) Oh, I thought you you had it queued up. Well, she says that she Uh, is... uh, What, this? No. (laughs) She says that she's feeling mother... Yeah, Yeah, she says she's feeling mother... mother No, I don't have the sound. We need to get the sound, but we do have a threads from Tony Burgess, 1969, who says, Mother Fluffin' Willow Nightingale, AEW Dynamite. Yeah, Mother Fluffin' is that. If that's not a shirt, 
Tom, when we hit AW Dynasty in St. Louis, because we're ballers and we'll be there. Well, what? If that shirt is there, I'm buying it. Oh, yeah. If that purple shirt is there of Willow on the fucking unicorn, I'm getting that. Yeah, I want Mother shirt? Fluff, and I want it in fluffy letters, like we said. Uh huh. Then we need to get her with Nick Gage doing the fucking and get the fuck anyway. But you know, that's well, if you don't want to go Nick Gage because he kind of put you in hot water with the pizza cutter and Domino's, at least Eddie Kingston, at least get her with Eddie yeah. Kingston. But well, but John Moxley's there, so he could just transition. Ooh. Like John Moxley is going up against somebody who's got a a, a lady, right? And they're like, oh, Matt Cardona, and what's her name, right? Oh, but she's well, in Chelsea and Green. Yeah, yeah. You uh, can do Chris Sabian and Penelope Ford. Right. Do they do yeah, GCW? Yeah. I, I, I haven't watched oh, them. Of course. Them. Sure. But of yeah. course. So they're over there. Yes. And then Moxie's over there and, and they're like, oh, yeah, well, who you got? And he's like, oh, I got somebody for you. I got well, Mother da, 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 da. Fluffin' Willow. <laughs> and then she, yeah. yeah. She's out here with da, light tubes, da, smiling, da, da, going crazy. Da, bang, da, 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 Come da. on. Yeah. That would be great. Uh, Fluff life. Love life. You know that's mean? about it. But uh, so, so uh, Willow Nightingale is talking about how she feels that Willow. you know. Stop that. Okay, she I'm sorry. <laughs> she uh, says how you know she never felt really you know wanted, but mm-hmm. here she is in pro wrestling, a chubby girl with tattoos, finally accepted, you know, curly, and she feels accepted. Because it all started in, in Massachusetts. So she's going to obviously use all this momentum and she's going to beat Julia Hart at Dynasty to become your TBS champion. Then Stokely Hathaway, in a little bit of yeah. a change face, takes the microphone and is like, essentially paraphrasing here, was like, hey, you guys know I usually shit on Willow Nightingale, but I ain't doing that here. I want you to know that this girl works her ass off. She's awesome. She's about it. I believe she's going to be champion. And I, and we hear CEO, CEO, and Tim, you know, you have told me as, for as long as we've seen her on the main roster, Sasha Banks, that is, of the, hey, I do the promos the same way. Uh-huh. And it was <laughs> never, and this is me still being positive and patient, but it was never more evident of a WWE packaged talent Mm. in AEW. Kind of like how people were like so dumbfounded with Cody using the Cody Tron or the Cody Vader and all the stuff that was AEW. And it was like, this is WWE, right? For as shocking as that was in WWE, not to say it was on that same level, but it felt that same feeling of like, this is a hundred percent WWE. Like, what the f- yeah it I, was. What, what did I'm you here think? for a promo no you're not you're interrupted here's my lines and everyone is like yeah I, it yes man i i told you i i even thought you know at least this was quicker right yes than we've been getting lately but it is still the listen i had to practice these lines 15 times, and I don't know how to make them sound like they're conversational, right? It's just too much, right? It's too much. It's not real. Like, again, well, and she even, this isn't real, but, like, yeah. you got to act like it's real. <laughs> yeah. Well, she even kind of, you know, air quotes here, breaks character because then she starts talking to the crowd as she makes her way down the ramp. It was like, this title would look good on me, right? And it's like, well, yeah, that talk like... Talk like that. Do that. Do that that. on the microphone, you know? Do that. But she eventually comes out here, cuts off Stokely Hathaway, and essentially just says, I don't care who wins at Dynasty at double or nothing. I've got what? Here's another thing. But yeah, you got next. You ain't The Rock and Cena. Who the hell is making a match a year in advance or whatever? Well, let's talk about this. Like. Let's talk about this on threads. Uh, at Theo underscore Moses 190 says, I love AEW, but Mercedes getting a TBS title shot without even having a match yet is stupid. Hey, Tony Khan, how does this make sense if the ranking system is supposed to matter? Come on, man. Hashtag AEW Dynamite. I will say this. Again, if this were if we're at a kayfabe world and we're watching a fighting organization and there were two major organizations, if you got one of the stars and you had a ranking system, 
you know their body work, you would put them in a high ranking, right? Like so, mm-hmm. but I don't know if they would be like straight up title shot right away. I mean, maybe, maybe. I mean, I guess well, you know, in some instances, if you were that good, which they're they're positioning her to be, so mm-hmm. it's not too absurd for me. But it is a bit eye rolling. I will give them that. Yeah, I just. And again, to call, because it would be one thing, in my opinion, to be like, and then the Wednesday after Dynasty, I've got winner. Okay, right? But you're saying, we're assuming that the winner. Three months from now. (laughs) Well, because that's the thing. We're assuming that the winner of this match, Julia Hart and Willow Nightingale, whoever that winner is. Stay the champion. Until the next. So, like. What the hell is that about? It makes the logical sense. Yeah, and see, you don't have to do that yet. You could say next week on Dynamite, and then we get a schmoz finish, and they continue the feud that builds to that. And they go, we're going to settle this at double or nothing. Yeah. Right? And so. And the bitch you better bring it match. I like that idea. I like that. Bitch you better bring it match. That's a good idea. Uh, So, yeah, we get that. And. That's it. She doesn't go to commentary. She makes her way walking down the ramp and then I guess goes to catering. I don't know what she did because then we never saw her again. Uh, but then yeah. we get the well, she went to do semifinals. CEO things, right? and of course, yeah. But yeah. we get the C, or excuse me, we get the semifinals of our tag team <laughs> tournament match. We get the Young Bucks versus the Best Friends. And Tim, this had a lot of fun moments in it, right? This was classic AEW that creates classic AEW moments. A lot of things we can talk about, but one thing I don't want to get lost in the shuffle is, and again, I have almost done a complete 180 on the Young Bucks. Still not 100% there, but it's getting closer. You've done like a 157. Matt, yeah. Matt Jackson yeah. <laughs> getting on the headset. Yes. And then saying Excalibur, why do I got to do your job? Go to commercial. We're going to be in picture in picture. And then they fucking do it was great. Like outstanding. Uh, did you see they put out a release on Twitter talking about this match? And it was so corporate where they were like, they were yeah. like, even though Okada will not be rooting, like he sends his interest. He's like, and he's, he's willing to have a conversation with them offline. <laughs> they were like, they were like, even though we think there's room for improvement uh, in their productivity, uh, we believe Trent and Chuck will, <laughs> or whatever yeah. it was like. Trent, Trent and Orange Cassidy, Orange Cassidy will do Cassidy well. Will, yeah. will do great in the night's nice So fucking great. They are hitting perfectly the executive corporate shithead. So well, great right now. And that's what I love about the, the timing of this. Because we've seen wrestler on headset usually it's just yeah. oh i'm the best hey, or you see me kicking this guy's ass and he did that to a certain extent but to then say we're going to commercial <laughs> yeah like That's- like i can see it on your sheet aren't you aren't you doing your job stop looking at me do your job look at the monitor look at the cue card <laughs> that was the yeah. chef's kiss was yeah. the hey i'm gonna like, say in your review things. coming up in a, in a couple yeah. of weeks you really want me to remember this <laughs> Yeah, that was cut awesome. to camera I, three already. <laughs> Throw the thing. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, I thought that was great. And so we get again a classic AEW match. Uh, we get some fun things here. We get an almost super kick Matt Jackson to Sue because Sue is uh, sitting ringside here. I'll just say this: coked out Shawn Michaels would have done it. Coked out Shawn Michaels would have done it. Um, but boy, that 157 that you've done might dial it back if you go fucking super kick and sue. God damn it. Well, <laughs> or maybe it dials it, it all the way. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, you know, I love hey, look, sue if Sue's consenting, I'll... you know, we're down yeah, or that's whatever. What I'm I love Sue and yeah. you don't fucking hurt Sue. Hey, Sue loves the game. Sue be yeah. down. If you're a heel, I get it. Right now. Yeah. After the match when they were shit cheese eating right. grin i was like what kind of person would maniacally laugh in the face of sue yeah you son of a you sons of bitches so they end up getting the victory they being the young bucks <laughs> they advance to the finals they will be taking on the winner of ftr versus top flight which they will have their match on collision uh the, the matchup will take place at dynasty we will get a new tag team champion great now let's get to the post-match mm. So Trent is upset and he's disappointed. 
Chuck Taylor, who's still injured, he comes in. He's like, hey, you know what? Kind of like shit happens. We're going to dust ourselves off like we always do. Let's get this hug. We know what they came for. We know why we came here. Let's do a hug. So the three of them all go to their own respective corners. And we get a psycho knee from Trent right to Orange Cassidy's face. Give him a little Aberdeen face buster. Chuck, looking, mm. you know, as dumbfounded as you can, Trent kind of looking like, you know, the first time murderer who finally pulled the trigger. You know what I'm saying? Like the, I can't. Yep. Been thinking about it, but was finally yep. like, I've had enough. Yeah. And then did it and then goes, I've got consequences, but I'm okay with now, it. Now, this is my new future now, right? But like, this is what it is. Yeah. Cap that off, though, that I thought was interesting, bypasses Sue. Because in the match, we saw Sue give Trent a kiss on the cheek, which maybe Sue is a distraction because then that led to the pinfall. We may get that uh, brought up in Trent's explanation later. But Sue doesn't turn heel with them is what I'm getting at, right? A mother, as we've seen Yet. with Mother Wayne, well, Mother Wayne sides with Nick Wayne, right? Sue doesn't necessarily just go, oh, well, Trent doesn't like yeah. Orange Cassidy and Chuck. Well, then neither yeah, this do is I. out of character, Trent. Yeah. <laughs> but like, but I'll go with it. I love you. You're you're my son, you know? Well, let's let's do this. Let's uh, let's head to the threads, right? Uh, at Tino Ibarra says, Sue's going to have to sit that young man down and give him a talking to. Hashtag AEW Dynamite. That could be fun, right? She's attempting to mediate, right? And you boys have been friends forever, right? And mm -hmm. he's like, Fuck that guy. She's like, language trend. <laughs> right? Like, oh, that could be good stuff, right? Or just flips stuff. them off. Yeah, flips them yeah. off. And she like brings the finger down. Yeah, like, she's like, stop. We don't do that here. Yeah, we we don't do that in this family. <laughs> stop. These boys have been your friends. You treat them with respect. They're your best friends. They're he no friends just, of mine. <laughs> yeah. And then like when he does the middle finger and she like, you know, puts it down. He's like, you did it to Santana and Ortiz in the van. She's like, that's different. Yeah, I learned it by you watching you, Ma. Yeah. <laughs> you okay? I learned it from yeah. watching you. <laughs> you yeah. Yes. Please. Uh, so now, listen. Gets... I would yeah, love, though, if we get Sue finally is like, all right. No, you're right. You guys have been fucking my boy over. And we get evil Sue. Now they're driving up in a black van. <laughs> right? She's dropping him off. Come out to fucking the best friends collide. I mean, I wouldn't hate we it. We could even get a, if Chuck's finally ready, we could get a triple threat to where Chuck also was like, fuck both of you guys. Right. Mm -hmm. And now we've yeah, got this triple this. threat. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like that idea. I really do. Uh, so we go to commercial, we come back and we get our main event because the actual main event segment was a contract signing. So this is our main event match. Ooh, are you forgetting about a uh, uh, backstage promo? With who? From uh, one uh, Ab Abra Hante. Ab oh, that's Abra after this. Adam that's Abra? after oh, this. That's after this. Okay. Right. Before yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but we get our main event match between Thunder Rosa yes. and Mariah May. Winner. That's right. You're gets, saying this is the main event match. Yes. Yeah. Right. Winner gets Tony Storm at Dynasty. I don't know if you saw this on Collision, but did you see Tony Storm learning about this matchup? Uh, in a backstage interview. Oh, she does great. So I believe it was Renee Paquette. Uh, yeah, pretty confident in that. Renee Paquette goes, hey, Wednesday on Dynamite, they're going to do a number one contenders match. It's Thunder Rosa versus Mariah May. And Mariah May is standing right behind Tony Storm. And Tony Storm, I'm paraphrasing here because her lines are better than what I'm going to say, and I don't want to butcher them. She turns to Mariah May and goes, was this your plan all along? And Mariah May's like, oh, shit. Like, I ain't, you know, like she like almost like the kid with the hand in the cookie jar, you know, mm -hmm. she's like, oh, shit. And then Mariah goes and kisses her and goes, I love it. And then just walks off. <laughs> she goes, what a great thing to do. I would do the same, you know, because, again, she's being. Right. The younger Tony Storm, right? She's learning. She's learning, yeah. yes. 
And we talked about this before we started recording, but I think it needs to be said. The line of the night, and there's some great lines from Joe. There's some mm. great lines from Swerve. There's some great lines from Adam Copeland about pro wrestling and all that. But the line of the night was from Tony Storm on commentary, who said, well, Thunder Rosa and Mariah May were wrestling is, you know, this Mariah May reminds me of a younger Tony Storm. And you know who Thunder Rosa reminds me of? An older Thunder Rosa. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait to use that line on people. Be like, you remind me of an older. <laughs> <laughs> that is so me. Yeah. I know. It's so great. It's so <laughs> but it's like, it it's like again, a second. You try to even wrap your brain around it, like how hey, you look like an older you is hilarious. <laughs> she does another line, and I can't remember this one either, but I do remember laughing pretty hard. And she told, she goes, by the way, tell the truck in the back, I'm not wearing any yeah. underwear, so don't do the under, <laughs> under the, uh, don't do the under the shot, shot again. Right? Shot. Just a, yeah, and then he's like, you got it, girl. <laughs> just like, just a quick note for the truck. <laughs> yeah, she's so fire with just the lines. Like, she's so creative, man. She's hilarious. I want, she's I hilarious. said it on threads, and I'm being dead serious. If someone can make it or if AEW will put it out, there needs to be a compilation of Tony Storm on commentary with oh, the yeah. Nobu massages, with the I'll punch you in the box, <laughs> to the fucking Thunder Rosa line. I mean, damn near everything she says. Each, she's becoming, for me, she's becoming as must see TV as Max Caster raps. You know what I mean? In the same vein of like, mm -hmm. oh, you know. Something happened with Vince McMahon. What is Max Caster going to say? Right. I have that same feeling yeah. of Tony Storm's on commentary. What the fuck is she going to say? She's one of my top five favorite acts right now, for sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And just her lines are just so. And, and it's all you don't register it, right? Like it's just like that right. line. It wasn't mean. It wasn't anything. But you're just like, motherfucker, that was a. That's a deep burn. Yeah. And then even like the yeah, You no can tell massages. they've given her free reign to just say whatever she comes up with. And she's thinking like, like her mind is running a hundred miles a minute and she's yeah. got stuff in the holster. Like, oh, I'm, I'm throwing them for a loop with this. I've got this line. This is I mean, early Jerry Lawler on raw yeah. stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Like yep, where it's just exactly. rapid fire, consistent, hilarious. Yeah, I mean, I learned about a Nobu massage because of her. And then when I found out what it was, yeah. and that's a thing that no eight-year-old's going to be like, oh, like it's not saying oh, suck it or whatever. But it's another one where when you want to sneak something in, right, to make people be like, what? And then like have them maybe find out later, right? Like you just be like, listen, guys, I'm late. I'm running. I'm late for my new room massage, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> yeah. And then you're out the door and they'll be like, okay, cool. And they'll be like, new room massage. You know, if they look it up, they'll be like, what in the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Right. What the fuck is Tom into? <laughs> yeah. I mean, what is Tony Storm I into? Tom was insane. a square, but uh, yeah. Gonna, yeah. <laughs> gonna, I thought I thought Tony here. Storm yeah. was right. I mean, her presentation <laughs> right. before she does this vaude villain or you know nineteen twenties character. Thought she yeah, was kind of just a girl amazing. with a yeah, just a girl with a little yeah, you know, black line under half a baseball eye. player over here. Yeah. yeah, she's fucking awesome. Uh, but Thunder Rosa gets the victory. Thunder Rosa tries to then, you know, get a little down and dirty. And she's like, let's fight now. Let's let's do it now. Let's fight right now. Tony Storm kind of lost for words, doesn't say anything. Just kind of taken aback like, oh, shit. This girl really wants to fuck me up. And then they separate and we get announced the dynasty. dynasty. Yeah. Uh, we're going to get Thunder Rosa versus Tony Storm. So, yeah, what would you think of the match? What do you think I'm about excited. the uh, matchup yeah, coming excited. up on Dynasty? Uh, I'm excited for the match coming up on Dynasty. That's going to be good. Uh, out on the threads, Christy, uh, Chrissy Chemistry said, Mariah May and Thunder Rosa are already beating the shit out of each other, and Tony is amazing as always on commentary. Hashtag AEW Dynamite. And, yeah, that, it just felt like... It, it just felt like a fun moment. We say this a lot about AEW. It feels like a party more often than not when we're watching Dynamite, and this kind of felt like that with Tony Storm, rapid-fire hilariousness, a great match going in with Thunder Rosa. We know she loves to bring it and is ready to throw around, mm -hmm. and this Mariah May is, is awesome. hitting home runs with everything she's doing also. So this yeah. was a great segment. Yeah, very, very good. 
uh, women's division on top is looking great. And look, even to their credit on uh, the TBS title picture, they're doing awesome as well. Cause you have Willow Nightingale. Mm-hmm. You obviously have a marketable, Willow. you have a marketable Mercedes Monet. So, you know, kind of hitting home runs everywhere yes. you look for the women's division. We are, we are missing a couple of heavy hitters though. And I can't wait to see him come back. An old Jamie hater haters going to hate. And then D M D. Yeah, man. We need some here's a perfect, up in here. Here's a perfect example of what Jericho needs to do. Now, Jericho's much older, obviously, but there was a moment, I think we would both agree, that as great as Britt Baker is, we we're getting a little like, oh, so the one segment is her again, right? Like, what are we doing with another Britt yeah. Baker segment? But now she's been gone for four months or so. Yep. And we're like, DMD motherfuckers. Wait till she comes. Like Jericho used to be the, the, yes. the wrestler that did that. King and now that. it's like, he was always the king of that. Uh, Justin Flores joined in the chat. We haven't seen Justin Flores in a while. I mean, you have, uh, yep. but it says y'all just scared the shit out of me with that. Hello? Tom's favorite. It's Tom's favorite. I hate it. Yeah. You know what always boggles my mind when you play that clip though is that jeff hardy. <laughs> is that's jeff hardy that's not someone yeah. doing it to make fun of him that's jeff hardy thinking my was, alter ego jeff what do you want to do and he's like this <laughs> yeah this wasn't a red rooster gimmick <laughs> this wasn't hey try to make the undertaker work this was <laughs> yeah it was all him i just and that's his voice that's mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hello? there you go <laughs> uh all right so then after thunder rosa wins then we do get as you mentioned Penta and his uh translator yep. not Shohei's, his, well not show otani's translator so remember that don't get yourself in trouble betting on things you with that God, they yeah. could lean into that, right? Did you? God, <laughs> I'll tell you when we stop recording, but there's an awesome joke about that that reminded me to tell you. But Penta says, hey, Adam Copeland, you know, you're facing all these outsiders. You're facing essentially, you know, Minoru Suzuki and some Ring of Honor guys. Why don't you take on an AEW original that has no fear? So next week, A matchup, again, that I would tell you last year, hey, we're going to see Edge versus Penta. You'd be like, how the fuck's that going to happen? And how will it look? We're going to see it next Wednesday. How crazy is that? Yeah, I'm excited. And this is another thing with the tribalism folks that I don't get, right? Because if you only had WWE, like you wouldn't get this, right? Like These kind of matches exist only in a place like this. Yeah. Uh, and it's going to be a blast. I'm excited for it. Um, uh, I am really liking how they presented Penta here. Alex spoke a little bit for him. Penta spoke a little bit, right? Alex said something. Penta set it up. And you've talked about this. Dude's bringing a lot of charisma. And if we can get stuff like this where we manage his communication, he can be a pretty decent high-level star here. And in fact, let's go to threads here. Burns33 says, Copeland versus Penta for the TNT Championship next week. Seated. Hashtag AEW Dynamite. That's going to be a fucking amazing. Like, that's going to be a blast. And, and you know, I, I've always been – I've been singing his praises for as long as I can remember, especially that St. Patrick's Day episode where he put on the hat. Yes. But I really think that this is going to be, assuming it's a good match, which we – are, are going to get it. Guess it will be. This is another thing where like, I get Osprey. I get Okada. I get Copeland. I get swerve. You need to at least in the rotation of the main event scene for three months while MJF is off. Right. And you know, that's 20 minutes of promo time. Get what I'm saying? Yeah. You need to elevate Penta to, I mean, yeah, we couldn't get Samoa Joe Penta. For the title, and I'm saying like a real program, not like a hey Wednesday Samoa Joe before Dynasty is going to take on Penta. Like a a oh shit, he might win the title. We could done Joe versus Penta, easy. Yeah, I I know you you can wrote it. 
Well, like, you know, I think there's a disservice done. And obviously, if you could turn back the hands of time, they would have changed things. But there's a disservice that Santana and Ortiz versus the Young Bucks for the AW champion tag team championships never happened. You know what I'm saying? There's a disservice that even Santana and Ortiz were never tag team champions. Now, obviously, it looks like they that won't ever happen. Maybe it will, you know, 10 years down the road or whatever happens. Yeah. But I think it's going to be a disservice if we look back on Penta's career and be like, you know how many titles he held? Fucking none. Like, he was a tag champion, none, yeah. but as a singles competitor, he opened the show a lot. He's it's so like, good. Man. He's so good. He's so good. Yeah. All right. So now we get to the main event segment. This is a contract signing. Samoa Joe walks out. Sort of Strickland walks out. Joe takes a seat and quick to sign. He goes, eh, here you go. Eh, take it. And then proceeds to verbally undrafts Swerve Strickland. He says, look at all this. I've been seeing it. You went from this. You had the hangman match. You got the chain around your uh, neck that you probably choked him out with. And you think you're so good. This is the second match. He says, uh, I have it here. He goes, uh, but at Dynasty, he's going to beat Swerve down so severely it will leave Swerve mentally scarred like he left a Diddy party too late. Jesus Christ. <sighs> yeah, coming with some heavy, heavy artillery with that. I mean, this is again, you're as we're talking about with tribalism, you ain't getting that line over in WWE. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, right. Oh, my gosh. And so Swerve then says, well, he's not really a fan of Diddy, which whatever, you know. <laughs> and then he just says, like, I've been dreaming about this because I didn't think it was true. But there's going to be a new dynasty at the pay-per-view, and it's going to be the dynasty of Swerve. And, he, you know, he talks about the signings of Okada and Mercedes Monet. And uh, he says, truth be told, the title is bigger than both of them. Because he knows that the importance it is of having, and I'm paraphrasing and maybe looking into something a little bit too much, of having non-blonde white dudes as champion, right? Like, this is the first time that a non-white blonde dude isn't challenging for the title, at least the, off the top of my head. And right. so he says he knows that Joe's a killer. And uh, St. Louis, he knows it's going to be whose house. And then everyone says, Swerve's house. And he says, run the fade on that, bitch. And then Joe shoves him. Great. Swerve hits him. Yeah. Then somehow, I forget how it happens, but Joe. Oh, Swerve tries to choke Joe. Did you catch this a little bit? Swerve tries to choke Joe. And Joe was like, why would you attempt that? Like, there wasn't a look of, like, yeah. scared. It was like. This is the best yeah. you got, you dumb fuck. Yes. Yeah. And then yeah. he takes the chain off and then he just beats the fuck out of Swerve Strickler. Just punches yeah. and punches and punches and punches. Mm -hmm. Refs come out, walk him up the entry ramp, and then Swerve gets back on the microphone and he's laughing like the Joker, you know, or the Riddler, whatever you want to say. And he's like, You motherfucker, that ain't. That ain't going to kill me. If that's, that's the best you got, got, then I'm taking your title. Yeah, yeah, you are fucked. And then that's when Joe changes the demeanor. Joe changes right. the demeanor of like, all right, little brother, I'm going to show you how we do it in the you know big time to, oh, wait a minute, this motherfucker thinks he can step to me? And then we get like, a different. Oh, you think that's all I got? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, oh, okay. Yeah. And he storms down. He gives him a. Rock bottom, I forget what they actually call it, but he gives him a rock bottom. And then he stands on his chest and he holds the AEW championship. So, Tim, what did you think of the whole ending sequence that we had here? Pretty classic wrestling go home stuff, right? Mm -hmm. I, I think I posted on on the on our website, which by the way, check out all wrapup.com about you know our AEW Dynamite preview that this contract signing. I said, well, as we all know, these are always usually you know, uneventful, everybody remains calm, so this will be no different, right? I think they gave mm -hmm. us all the cliches there, but I think the guys delivered on all of them, right? 
We got the lines yep. from Joe. We got believability in the fight. We got a good reasoning for Swerve. Like, no, this is destiny shit, right? Like, this ain't, this ain't about you anymore. And then mm-hmm. we got a fight. And we got, I'll say, we got Joe looking the stronger, which traditional wrestling folklore leads us to believe. That's Swerve's you know, house. We'll be picking soon, and you'll be wearing a shirt, you know, but you know, he'll be wearing a Jeff Jarrett shirt. You still got it, right? He didn't burn it I yet. still have it. I still have it. I you have still it, like, have hanging it. above your bed? You want... <laughs> I do not. I do not. That's what my dog sleeps on, actually. Right. No, I'm kidding. Um, oh, nice. <laughs> so that was AEW Dynamite. Tim, what do you think overall? That's actually, that would be funny. <laughs> yeah. What do you think overall? Why does it smell uh, like a dog's asshole? Like, I don't know. <laughs> Laundry no soap's cheap these days. Fucking yeah. capitalism. <laughs> yeah. Goddamn. Shrink. Shrink. Uh, what do they call it? Shrink. Uh, Shrinkflation, I guess. Yeah. Shrinkflation. Yeah. Some of a bitch. I just can't get enough of this soap, apparently. Yeah. Uh, so what did you think of Dynamite as a whole tonight? Did you, did you have a good time? What did you kind of oh, I loved it. I love Dynamite tonight. I thought it was a great Dynamite. Uh, I, I didn't find a whole lot of holes with it, right? We found a few things I think we nitpicked, but I think overall, good flow, a lot of good storytelling on this build, which I think I pointed this out to you offline. We're still a couple weeks out. They're doing a good mm-hmm. build of like, we know what's coming. We're still getting action. We're, mm-hmm. It's not lulled yet. Yet, we'll see. We've got a couple weeks to get there. You know what I mean? And they are very advanced in some of these storylines. So it'll be interesting to see how they, you know, stretch that out. But I, I liked this episode a lot. I liked it. There was some structurally that is the only problem i had if you were to just tell me these following things happen i'm like man that's fucking awesome and uh, overall this was a b to b plus episode for me however again if i knew what was written out i would have changed two things one it felt as if we did and again i don't know the exact times but i'm just gonna say i'm generally speaking But we had 20-minute match, 20-minute match, 20-minute match, 20-minute match, promo, we're out. I would have broke that up. I would have done, if you're going to do 20-minute matches, 20-minute match, 20-minute match, Joe and Swerve, boom. Because then you can continue the Swerve's looking for Joe. Joe left the building. Well, Swerve's still fucking pissed, right? And Prince Nana and the embassy are trying to like calm them down and you could even have swerve punch one of the embassy guys right like get the fuck out of my way you know what i mean because it would have broke up the show from just 20 minute match 20 minute match 20 minute match but also the, the element i think that's missing right now and i said this maybe two weeks ago but if you recall when eddie kingston took the tv and tried to throw it at the inner circle, I think it was, yeah. or the Jericho Appreciation Society, mm-hmm. one of those groups, you know? Yeah. And he fucking, and it was like, God damn, what the, that, there's not that, right? It Everything's feeling a little too clean. It's, it's this segment, then this segment, yep. then this segment, like Billy Gunn, to his credit, interrupting Jay White's uh, entrance was yeah. a little bit of a mix up, but you know what I'm saying? And so then I would have ended you know, if you're like, okay, Tom, well then if you fucking move that, what do you guys, your main event, then I would have ended with a more put out, you know, pronounced punch to it. Trent turning on orange Cassidy. That's yeah. your lasting image. You get the psycho knee. Chuck grabs him. He could even walk out know, on his mom. Yeah. I don't know if Chuck is like legitimately hurt. You know what I'm saying? But if he's not right, like right. that badly hurt, he could rock bottom making that up. Chuck. Yeah. If Sue's a good actress. Now, this is just hoping that she's a good actress. Yeah. Sue walks up to Trent. Trent kind of bumps her, right? Like a get out of my way. And if you could get her crying. Yeah, she's crying. And then yeah, that's right? it. That's But like even that, it. even without that, all you do, like you could have done the same thing you did there and just hit it more, right? A little more yeah. of like, Chuck being like, dude, what the fuck, bro? Yeah. And then him being like, get off me. And mm-hmm. then Sue just trying to be like, whoa, whoa, whoa don't, 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 don't leave. Like, no, 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 like we, we can fix this. Right. And they'll be like, you know what I mean? Like just leaves her. Right. Like, like, like son, you know what I mean? And he's just like, you know, just fucking ah, walks off. Yeah. So, Ooh, I just had an idea. You get the Again, camera over might... her shoulder. Right. Well, She's this, like this might not be a... watch him walk away. <laughs> that, but before you do that, the thing that's the like gut punch for her. Because again, if she can't cry, that's fine, right? Not everyone can cry on right. cue. But what you would do, and again, if Chuck can't be physical because of an injury, he just says, get out of my way. Maybe he shoulder checks Chuck, right? Sue goes, 
Trent, what the hell? And Trent takes the coat because she was wearing the best friend's jacket, takes the jacket off of her. And it's like, you don't wear that. Yeah. yeah. Or just, just takes it off of her and yeah. throws it. It's like, you don't wear that. And then she's like, yeah. remember when, remember when negative Those one steps on it. <laughs> well, cause remember when negative one, when 10 turned his back on the dark order and that was yes. negative one's favorite wrestler. And he's just looking at the mask in his Ripped hands. Up mask. And they're behind him, like celebrating. Obviously, you can't sell, but like that, exactly. that would have been, yeah, that would have been fun. But, yep. yeah, her picking know, up the jacket and mm-hmm. like looking after him as he's just walking away, not looking back, right? Just, yep. He doesn't care. He's out. But, you know, that's why they pay me the big bucks on YouTube. Tony, just saying. That's right. Which reminds us, go to alleatwrapup.com. There's two new donate buttons on there. You can donate with PayPal or you can donate with Cash App. Uh, Cash App Mike D says, hello. Hello, Mike. We are just now at the end of the show. So sorry if you joined in late, but you can rewind it and watch it back. Join us here next week because we love all the All Eat Wrap Up fans. Reminder, go to alleatwrapup.com. Subscribe. It is completely free and we don't spam you. We don't spam you much at all. Demolition with Crush 2025 Hall of Fame. Yeah, that'd be fun. That'd be fun. Why not? Let's see Crush up there. Demolition, but, great. Demolition wrestled yeah. uh, the um, the Regal Twins in Kansas City. That's right. They Regal did. Twins, shout they out did. to Here's them. Turn a wreck. The old yeah, turn a wreck. A couple miles from the house nowadays. But oh, anyway, yeah, we will be back next week with a fresh All Eat Wrap Up. That'll probably be Thursday, maybe Wednesday again. But we'll see what happens. Stay tuned to alleatwrapup.com for more info. And uh, we'll see you all next week. 